Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 34, excitingly named XOPS. But what it really is, is a crossfade done with the Ops object. Um, you may recall that we, just in our very last video, made this wonderful device, which I will now uh, zoom in on a bit so we can get a better look at it. And uh, what this object does is uh, can fade from one uh, video to the other. I'm just going to make this one bigger because we're more interested in the outputs than the than the inputs, right? So in the midst of this video. Um, and they do take up processing power, so why not just make them small? Okay, so. Um, in the midst of the last video, I said, well, you know, Xfade does something similar to what JitOps does, but of course fading back and forth, that would be so complicated. How could we do that? Well, it's something that we can, and... Um, if that's not reason enough, then I don't know what is. But there's also a, a, if we want to make this fade, is we need to make this movie fade to black when this movie's not, and make this movie fade to black when this one's not, and then add them together using JitOps. So what we're going to do is use another object called scale bias. So hit the N and start typing JIT dot uh, no, not uh, SC. Oh, there it is. Scale bias. Beautiful. And the nice thing is that we've already made this number maker over here. So all we have to do is change that number into something that scale bias can understand, which will be scale. So we're going to want to prepend it, which you know is another object. Prepend. Yes, scale, not splay, touch typers out there, but scale, okay. And, whoops, come on, let me just get that hooked up there. And then we'll bring a little window down here and connect that up to scale bias. Whoops. I don't know why it did that, but it did. And then let's get some video down there for this. We like to uh, run it direct to scale bias. Not going through the jitter matrix up there, but just like that. And like that. And there we get it, and let's um, hook this up so that it gets prepended and all that nice stuff that we swore that we were going to do. So a number between 0 and 1 coming out of here, getting prepended with a scale, and then this scaling it in between. So let's lock our patcher and make sure that it works before we do this again on the other side. Oh, look at that scaled right down to black and right up to full white. Give yourself a pat on the back and then take this whole mess oops, unlock the patcher, take this whole mess um, we're going to be really running out of space today, I can, I can assure you of that and copy this and put it over here maybe a little bit higher up because, like I said, we're going to be or maybe a little bit over here. Even. And maybe that's what I'll do with this one. I should have done that first. Um, we'll just move this over here. And then reroute your cord however you want to do it. There we go. Okay. 
Um, to get this one to work, of course, we're going to have to negate the value coming out of here. If a zero comes out at this end, we want it to be a one, and if we a one comes out at this end, we want it to be a zero. So we know if we could just get one to subtract whatever is coming out of here, we could get that number. And there is a special way to do that. Type n and type a an exclamation point and a minus sign. And then space one. Um, the exclamation point means reverse what's going on. Instead of this number coming out of here being minus one, and then we'll prepend it with a scale, and then we'll send it in there. And it will uh, should make this window over here on the right. So it should make this um, um, a window the opposite of this window. That is, if there was video coming in, which there will be in a second. Run this down here, and run this right over to no, no, yes, scale bias. There we go. So let's lock it down and see how it's working here. I'm going to go to the left. We have a black thing on the left. Humorously, I should have done this precisely the other way around. Um, It's never too late, is it? Because what I did was I, I we're turning this down. This one's going black, and this is going full on. So I actually should have. Here, let's unlock it and take this. And get rid of this patch cord. Okay, and move it over here because this is the one that needs to be scaled backwards. So I'm going to just grab this back. And let's see if we got it right this time. Lock your patcher down. And look at that. So now we have the full bright over here. Of course, the mixing is going on here with X fade, and this one's fully dark. And then we have the reverse, fully bright and fully dark. And that's exactly what we want. So that now we can take our famous um, uh, JIT op object. Let's type that in there. Oops, unlock your patcher. N JIT dot op at op and then just for the sake of argument let's stick a plus in there. Okay. Now since uh, crossfade's working here, I'm just gonna move it over like that. And then It'll all make sense in a minute, I'm sure. Okay, so we want to take the output from scale bias and run it in the right, uh, excuse me, left inlet of JIT op. And then we want to take the output from this scale bias and run it in the left hand inlet. So now, essentially, I'm going to get these connected here. Okay, so this thing in this side, let's put this in the oh, well, and then I'm going to want another window here to look at the result. So I'm going to copy this window with the old option click. Hold them up side by side. I know this makes for messy patch cords, but you know, um, goodness, 
really gets messy. Okay. So here's our JIT Ops version of Crossfade, and here's our regular Crossfade. Let's lock our patcher and see what we get. Not bad. Looking pretty similar there. They're not 100% the same, I would say. One sort of moves in a linear way, and the other moves kind of logarithmically. But uh, not bad. We get the same thing going across there. Um, now for the fun part. Um, because JITOP is the cool thing that it is, it means that we can... Um, you know, let's just grab this silly thing and bring it, drag it down here so that we can actually use it. Um, and then tell it to route all its patch cords. And this one too. Come on. But I just have to look. Oh, I think I can do it this way. Get it out here. Come on. If it seems painful, it's because this computer is actually significantly older than my computer, and it's really suffering. And one last patch cord to just. Get the windows clear here. Beautiful. Okay, so what cool thing about JIT Ops could we do? Well, if you recall, JIT Op has the possibility of using any signs here, not just plus. So let's use some other ones. Let's make a uh, New object, whoops. Yeah, new object. Look in there. Can I just get a new object here? And type U menu. There it is. And uh, what we want to do is get the inspector so that we can. Uh, put items in here. What we want to do is put all the mathematical um, possibilities we can think of. And uh, do you, I don't know if you remember, come down and edit with 